All right, we're going to welcome you back to the Principles Podcast. This is Season 3, Episode 20. We're talking boys hoops. Today we have joining us, obviously, Mr. Hyam and Mrs. Bondi. But we also are recognizing one of our senior boys, Jacob Zeiger. Um, for those of you out there, I probably have known Jacob the longest in this little circle. I've known him and his family along with his relatives pretty much my entire life. And what's been really great watching uh, Jake this year is he is really smooth with that ball. Um, he has control of that court. And it's not just a one-person team, but um, obviously all the guys on the court. But most of the time when Jake's out there, he has the ball. He's kind of the captain of the ship running the ball up and down the court looking for an open guy. So, Jake, thanks for joining us today. No problem. Thanks for having me. So you've played basketball your whole life, and obviously you've played with all your friends. Um, could you give us a little preview, uh, a little bit about our, your team this year? You guys had to start late because of football, but you yeah. were starting to develop rapport with the guys who were there. Talk about that transition from day one, when it was just half the team to basically 10 to 15 days later when everyone was able to join. Well, the beginning, uh, you know, we just started like, you know, just getting into the groove of things again, you know, like running, getting our shot back, like just working on some skills and everything. But once everyone came back, that's when we really started hitting everything hard. You know, we started getting our plays down for our first week. It was just a ton and ton of like getting plays and also a ton of running to get in shape for the way Morowski wants us to play this year. And that is exactly what we're watching because all three of us have have watched boys hoops this year. Um, and you can tell after such an extraordinary end of last season uh, that the everyone was after you guys. You got a target on your back um, yep. in the WRC. Um, and we have seen that. And I think we're still in the, the early stages, clearly, of the season for you guys. But this Hilltopper team is going to only get more refined uh, and stronger as the year progresses. Um, I had the opportunity to watch you guys at NDCL. Um, minus that first quarter where they did not miss a shot, you guys really controlled uh, both sides of the court. Um, and ultimately, we're up by almost, you were up over 20 in the fourth, and they started to put their starters back in. But Coach Murawski stayed cool. And he left who he had out there to get development. And I think that's absolutely important for a coach to, to get the development of, of players that don't get, you know, 15, 20 minutes a game. They're the ones getting seven, six, five minutes because those guys matter uh, as much as, as the starters. So can you talk a little bit about the relationship you have with your teammates? Oh, yeah, we we're all close together. You know, we all see each other a lot throughout the day. We're always hanging out uh, and during practices, we're always having fun together, but also, you know, being serious when it comes to practice. But we're really close. We all, you know, talk every day on social media and stuff. We have a group chat together uh, where we just talk about like what's going on and stuff like that. So we're, we're really close. Now, we all know that Coach Murawski is the head coach, but you have also some great assistants. Um, what roles do they play? You have uh, I don't know the name of your new coach that joined you, but obviously yeah, that's coach, uh, coach Anthony. Yeah. Coach Anthony, coach Toth, but they're, um, they really help with like um, all the little things. Morowski, you know, he covers like the big stuff, but they help like cover the little things, you know, like they'll talk to us during games, pulls aside, tell us like, Hey, make sure you're doing this. Or like, they'll like set up some of the game plan too. Like at the beginning of the games, when the stars are announced, coach Toth always tells us, Hey, that's who you're guarding. Like when they're announced, when they come out. So that's always nice. It's been a, a lot of fun. And I know that um, Mrs. Bondi loves basketball. Mr. Heim just loves sports in general, has his his boys play hoops. Um, I want to transition over to you two uh, because, uh, Doug, in particular, you were able to watch the, the guys more recently. Um, you've gone, well, I should say guys and girls recently. And um, Mrs. Bondi, you watched the Riverside game. Um, so let's trans transition over, Mr. Hyam, uh, some of the questions you might have before we get into your portion of uh, chicken and steak. Jacob, you know, last year I think the team made a run that some people expected, some didn't. What were your what were the goals coming into this year, knowing that your team is different than last year? 
This year, so Morowski came up with our term, our saying for this year is all in. Basically, you know, we're just, we're together, working together. He's saying, you know, if we just put 100% effort in all the time, we can make an even better run this year than we did last year. So you guys got a late start to your season for a good reason, but it puts a little extra stress on the team, maybe playing those back-to-back games or playing, um, you know, a game after a tough win or a tough loss. How has the team, you know, worked through that, through trying to get a good practice in, but also keeping the legs fresh? Um, well, we, after those, like, two or three straight days of games, our first practice after that is usually a bit lighter. We usually keep it easy, but then the practice after that, we run a lot. But we it's preached to us that it's all mental toughness. If we just stay sharp mentally, we'll be able to bounce back after those hard losses and just be able to play well the next game or if we have a practice the next day, just be able to get back at it and just focus on the next game and not worry about it. You know, I saw the Willoughby South game, and I think that was a game where several guys, and I don't want to leave anyone out, stepped up into a role that maybe they weren't expecting to be in. What do you think that was able to provide you leading into the postseason coming up in the next few weeks? What do you think that provided this team? Well, with with uh, people being out and all that, it's just provided other people to get opportunities they may not have had. And for that, that's really big coming up for the postseason. It's always nice to be able to have like nine guys on a bench that you can trust being put them in the game and they're going to be able to do well. And it's not going to be like their first time getting in and they'll be able to like actually help out the team. You've been around the team a lot. And I know none of the performances we've seen lately is surprising to you, but there has to be someone on the team that's kind of taken that next step that you weren't expecting. Is there someone that's really producing more than what the team was thinking they were capable of doing? Uh, I'd probably have to say probably Nathan, Nathan Tager. I mean, I've, he's a good friend of mine. I've always known he's good at basketball, but the jump he's taken from last year to this year, scoring wise and being a leader, has just been really, really impressive. And we're all very proud of him and what he's been able to accomplish so far this year. And uh, one last question before I turn it over to the soon to be basketball coach. Uh, you guys got goals, but what do you think it's going to take to reach those goals in the next few weeks? What do you think you're going to have to improve upon? Uh, a big focus so far this year has been defense. We've been really hitting the defensive side hard. We've kind of lacked at that so far our first few games. So if we just work on our defense, stay in shape, keep running, we'll be able to meet our goals for this year most likely. That second half of the NDCL game, you guys were on point with your defense. Mm -hmm. Um, the steals, the charges that were being called, the turnovers, you were completely in control. Um, so that is, you know, a good goal that you've been working on. And clearly with a, a close, not that we play them often, but they're a rival because they're in town and you always want to beat, uh, you know, private schools in your same house. Um, cause you, you know, a lot of those guys, but it was really good to see that defense come to fruition. Um, so I commend you on that goal because I know it's only gonna get sharper. So now we're going to go to the uh, women's NBA coach of the year, who's about to coach <laughs> Littles, um, Mrs. I think Bondi. I've, I've been promoted twice in this podcast alone. Um, I did do a little bit of coaching when I was in in high school on the tail end. Um, we used to have the little girls clinics, and all of us on the team would then coach the little girls clinics. And I had a really fun time with that. And I've always thought about that would be fun to get back into eventually. But I grew up in a home with a dad who was a basketball coach for 35 years. He played basketball in college. He played basketball in high school. So it's always been, always been a really big thing. We always used to watch like Hoosiers together. Have you ever seen Hoosiers, Jacob? Yeah, I have. That's, that's a pretty good movie. One of my all-time favorites. It's just such a good, a feel-good movie. So it was big. Um so looking at movies, do you have a favorite like basketball type movie? Would it be Hoosiers or do you have another one? Uh, I, li I like a few. I like like Mike. I also like H Hoosiers. Those two are probably my top two favorite basketball movies. Yeah. And you've kind of been working on ball handling all your life or were you like a Pistol Pete yeah. kind of out there? Yeah. Do ever, you know who Pistol ever Pete is? I could walk. Yeah, I know who Pistol <laughs> Pete is. Yeah. But ever since I can walk, my dad's had a ball in my hands, just dribbling, 
all throughout the house. I'd be dribbling. I'd be yelled at for dribbling in my room sometimes. I love know, it. Making too much noise. Yeah. My son's six right now, and there's always a ball. He has like a hoop, one of those. It's it's like the glass back um, mini ones that goes on the back of your door with yeah. a breakaway rim and everything. Constantly, I'm like, what the heck is going on up there? And it's always he's playing basketball in his room, which then I don't care because I think that's awesome. Um, so so ball handling skills, obviously, it's been big for you. Did you go to a lot of different camps and stuff? Yeah, growing up. Uh, I'd always go to the Chardon basketball camp they have every year. I'd go to that. I'd also go to a few other camps all throughout the summer. Is that I'd the one be- with like Mr. Buemi? And did you ever go to that one? That was like a Chardon sports camp. Okay. No, I won't the only tell him. Uh, one I've gone to is one when uh, Mr. Snyder, when he used to coach, he ran it, and then Morowski, he ran it for a few years when I went to. Nice. So. Drills wise, what are some of your favorite drills? What are some of your least favorite drills? Because drills can be pretty intense. Yeah, like when Morosky says, get out there and do this one, what's the one that you like want to just run over into the corner and shut down? Uh my one of my least favorite drills. Ooh, there's there's a few. Uh there's one that's necessary we have to do it, but I don't really like it. It's a closeout drill. Or like they got four people on the three point line. You close out the one, then you run back under the basket. You run to the next one. You close out. That one's that one's really tiring, and that one uh that one gets me. I don't I don't really like that one. Yeah. Do you have a favorite one? Favorite one. Uh, we call it Spartan. It basically starts off on a a two two v one, and then it turns into a three v two, and then four v three. You do that all the way until it gets to a, a five on five, and I really enjoy that one. That one sounds like fun at the end of practice. Is that an end yeah. of practice drill? Yeah. Um, yeah. Really just getting to see you guys is fun. I got to come to the Riverside game. I um, really enjoyed that game. I wish that it had a different outcome, but they're a great team. So you guys, I mean, you have some stiff competition this, this time, this, this season, I think. So I'm looking forward to watching some more. If Morosky needs some pointers, tell him to give me a call. He knows okay. my number. <laughs> Let's go and transition to uh, the new year with chicken and steak. So we got quite a few here. Uh, they're going to lead into each other. So Jacob, just have a little fun with it. Uh, okay. Basketball. Basketball is played in the winter, but it's also played in the summer. When should it be played? I'm going to go with winter. Because you know, I I much I'd much rather be playing in a gym than outside at some courts. You know, in the summer you could have the wind, you know, blowing too that could mess with the ball. So I prefer playing in the winter. Well, you have the second question there. I don't know if you you saw this cheat sheet here before my question, so it's where I was going to go next. You know, I'm sure you played these games growing up. Do you rather play three on three or would you rather play thirty three? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I'm going to go with 33 because I have a lot of good memories of playing against my brother and dad with that. So how do you run the rule? Do you run it back down to 27 or how do you work it when you don't get uh, to 33? Back down to so, 21. Uh, what we do, if you don't get exactly 33, you go back down to 21. Yep. Wow. Back to 21. You got to make, you got to earn it. Can't get that free ride to 27. huh? Oh yeah. So, you know, you, you, you play up on top. Would you rather have a night of assist or a night of scoring? Uh, personally, I'd rather have a night of assists because I just feel like assists, point scoring is obviously pretty fun, but I find more joy in getting like assists and leading to have my teammates scoring so they can have a good game. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of talk on the uh, ESPN and on Twitter how the, the current players don't know some of the history and some of the, you know, different things. You you remember the Fab Five? Have you heard of the Fab Five? Yes, I have. So, you know, they played for that team up north. Um, mm-hmm. Rather, Would you rather have short shorts like uh, Larry Bird or the long shorts like the Fab Five? Definitely short shorts. I cannot play in long shorts. If my shorts go past my knees, it's just, it's brutal. I can't do it. This Maybe whole little... short shorts coming back in is so yeah. weird to me. Yeah, a little Mark Price <laughs> out there, right? A little Mark Price, yeah. Rather yeah. Than, uh, Jawan, you know, Jawan Howard out there. Uh, so I'm going to leave leave you with this one. I'll turn it back over to Murray. You know, the the NBA is coming to Cleveland here. 
next month. Going to showcase some different things. Would you rather go to the three point contest or the dunk contest? Oh, dunk contest for sure. The three point contest is cool. But that's just watching people hit threes. I'd rather go see some people throw down some nasty dunks. There you go. A little chicken and steak for you to start the new year. Yeah, it's great. So, J- Jake, it's always, uh, I've always loved watching you grow, literally physically, because you've grown like a foot in the last four years. Um, but also just as you're a- you're academically really strong and you're very humble, uh, you work really hard and you have a great family and you have great teammates, uh, which gives us the opportunity now to give shout outs. So this time of the podcast, before we close, we give somebody we want to give a shout out to. Um, so I'll let you think that went through. Um, and I guess are you, you see on my screen, hi, you're pointing to um, Zyger to go. So then you have to point down, and that would be ladies first, Bondi. Um, I guess I'm going to give a shout out to my dad because he's the one who really um, instilled a love for basketball in me, and it's something we've always bonded on. And I don't know if anybody knows this, but he actually stopped into the building last week. Nice. <laughs> And my mom and I have this joke about he's retired. He doesn't coach anymore. So he's like always trying to find stuff to do, I guess. But he happened to be in Chardon and he stopped in. And Tina Lacoste gave me a call and said, hey, your dad's up here in the office. And I'm like, dad, it's good to see you, but you got to go home. You know, why didn't you put him to work? (laughs) Wait, wait, I think there was that the guy with his legs across the whole walkway so so no one could get get by and, you know. There's a hazard out there. But the worst part is, you know, eh, I won't even go there. But security wise, you know, he walks in like he owns the place and Tina's going, who the heck is this? So we had to question, she had to question him and then he's like, you know, so That's anyways, funny. he wants to come to a couple of games. So I'm sure you'll see him, Jacob. No pressure, Jacob. Don't let that change <laughs> the way you play the game. Hi, do you have a shout out this week? I'm going to. Shout out the department chairs and all those individuals in the different departments who are putting together our course descriptions. Uh, believe it or not, we are going to be starting scheduling here in the in about four to five weeks, and we got to put together a program of study and and really have changed the direction that we're going with how we're doing things with moving forward. And truly appreciate the time and effort that they've put into putting this program of study together to allow our families and students specifically to know the direction they should go with their course selections. So thank you. So I'm not going to steal your thunder there, uh, Jake, but I want to give a shout out to your dad who does a lot of the stats for the girls games. He's out there with his little, his little glasses on looking up and down cheering and then statting back down. And I don't think every, anybody really knows he's doing that, but he's literally running the book and watching as a parent. So major shout out to your dad this week and all of our Hilltopper parents. I'd like to give a shout out to my grandpa because he, he used to coach basketball at North when he was a teacher. And after every game, he's always at my games, but after every game, he always shoot me a text saying like, hey, you did good, but maybe work on this. He's always trying to help me improve and become a better basketball player. And he's been in the stands. I've seen him up there. So that's Mm -hmm. awesome. We are going to um, have two parts to our podcast today. We're going to have Riley Zimmerer uh, coming in this later on this afternoon for Girls Hoops, uh, who had a big victory last night. You get to play the same team tomorrow night. We are going out to Mayfield country um, to take on the Wildcats. And then on Saturday, are you guys heading out to Badger country, taking on Berkshire? Yep. So you have a lot of games to make up because either either people canceled on us or we had to cancel on them because of uh, the state championship stuff. So you're going to be literally yeah. feeling like two a days here coming up. Um, best of luck uh, as you go into the weekend. Um, keep on playing as hard as you have. And I love the camaraderie you and your teammates have. Uh, thanks for joining us today and Thank have you. a great day. Everybody go toppers. Go toppers. Go toppers. Enjoy your four-day break.